engine parts, crankshafts, pistons, and more pistons. Here we got showing the bottom end of this engine. Whenever you're working on any engines that are going to be a little in the high performance arena, we always think about balancing them. Why do you have to balance engines? Well, just like you're balancing the uh, tires on your car. If you don't get your tires balanced on your truck, car, the, uh, the unbalanced spot at higher speeds you'll feel a vibration or if it's on the front of your vehicle you might feel some shimmying coming through the steering wheel and whatnot. So you want to balance your all rotating assemblies in your high performance engine because it, uh, if you have an unbalanced condition you will be having more vibration, more undue wear, and it will rob some horsepower. So we take special care to balance up the uh, rotating assembly and also the reciprocating assembly uh, in the form of the pistons and uh, pin end of the rod that goes up and down. And of course the uh, big end of the connecting rod goes round and round so you have to figure all that into the equation when you're balancing also so a lot goes into it but if you don't balance it you're not going to make as much power you're going to have wear occurring quicker and you're going to have uh, more breakage things will break so that's why we balance this is a <clears throat> crank and flywheel and front pulley off of a what is three cylinder compact diesels and uh, it's kind of tricky to balance these son of a boogers um, first you got to balance all the pistons and the connecting rods you got to balance the big end and the little end get them all weighing the same balance your pistons and pins and your rings and such on a gram scale. Get all your pistons weighing the same. Pistons, rings, and clips and rings. Get them all weighing the same. Using the gram scale. And you use the same gram scale when you're balancing the connecting rods. Each end of the connecting rod. When balancing your pistons, you have to find the the lightest one and get all the ones weighing the same as the light one. <clears throat> you get the heaviest one and you remove material, you need to chuck it up in the lathe if it's a lot of material to remove and take some material off of here or you can just use your die grinder and take material off by grinding in here as you can see I've done in a couple of spots right around here where there's excess material around the, where it was cast and until you get them all weighing the same as the latest one with this thing here and you got a gauge here that reads how much vibration there is in its spinning. The machine has different levels of sensitivity. You usually start out balancing on set number three. It gets more precise as you go up and then finish it up on uh, setting number one. When you spin it up you can there's several different ways to balance the machine works. You and balance end for end, which is what I usually do, the right right side and the left side. It has uh, sensors in here that sense the vibration. And the trick is to get it where it'll spin up with that needle not moving. Let's see what we got here. 
clean it up as much as you can and watch the needle you can see the needle there thing spinning like that you got your needle hardly moving that's on the left check the right side switched it over to the right still the needle's not moving it's going up a little bit but not much if it doesn't go up above that number one on your finest setting you know you got it pretty darn close and it gets down slow it'll have a little more movement but what I like to check is how it does with the thing spinning as fast as the speed if you got it spinning up fast as you can get it and that needle's just hanging right there you got it pretty close work but pays off with a smoother running engine it's a lot easier on everything make more power so anyhow might be saying well what do you got to do to get it balanced either add weight to certain parts or better to take your weight off a little hole here we drilled to uh, get it finally balanced now on this end I actually had to add weight to it got to get it uh, in balance. So. Now when I was a young man before I had specialized equipment still knew the engine needed to be balanced in a pro stock buckshot and I wasn't about to pay anybody to do it. Uh, I couldn't balance a rotating assembly like the flywheel and clutch. I did have somebody do that but the uh, crankshaft was John Deere gets in pretty close, close enough. Uh, but the uh, pistons and connecting rods I balanced up on this homemade little scale I made balance beam scale and it's more accurate than you think little, got this little indicator point up here as you can see it tipping back and forth let me get it where it's not so much in the background <laughs> Get a couple pistons on there. This is how I did my reciprocating assembly in my 5020 Pro Stock Buckshot. Worked just fine. Also balanced my connecting rods on there, each end, one end at a time. I had a jig made up to do that. Like I say, it's a uh, you see this little needle up here that I made? And that thing gets right in between there. They're both weighing the same. So you can do a good job even with crude equipment if you're careful. Clean it up as much as you can and watch the needle. You can see the needle there, thing spinning like that. You got your needle hardly moving. That's on the left. Check the right side. Switched it over to the right. Still, the needle's not moving. It's going up a little bit, but not much. If it doesn't go up above that number one on your finest setting, you know you got it pretty darn close. <laughs> 